just the reminder when you guys are looking at a piecewise functions, in this case, we have two breaking points. We have a breaking point at one, and we have a breaking point at two. And again, if I was just going to like sketch this graph, I have no idea if it's continuous or not, and I don't really need to know at this point. All I need to know is 1 minus x squared, so that's going to be an upside down parabola. So that's going to be less than 1. So here's 1. There's one breaking point. And then there's another breaking point. I don't want to make it look like an asymptote. And there's another breaking point at 2. So let's say it's going to be a downward parabola at 1. So it's going to look maybe something like this. At 3, it's going to be 2, 1, 2, 3. Let's do some kind of like line there. And then you have a linear equation greater than 2x minus 1, so I don't know. That's something it could look like, right? I mean, that's just a rough sketch, just to get an idea. The main important thing is, when we're dealing with the limit as x approaches 1 from the right, well, here's 1 and here's 2. What function are we dealing with 1 from the right? We're dealing with that function, that equation, right? So 1 from the right is just going to equal 3, all right? And you could basically say, because there's 1, what's to the right? And to the right is anything greater than 1, right? So that's why x is greater than 1, so that's going to be coming from the right. From 1 from the left, it's going to be values that are less than 1, so it's going to be this function. And so all we've got to do now is plug in 1 in from there, and you get 0. So you can see my graph is going to be incorrect. And again, we're just plugging in the 1. The, the, the plus and the minus just tell us the direction that we're coming from. That doesn't actually tell us, like, you know, make sure it's not the value, again, you're looking at. Um, and then over here, we have x is equal, or what is the value of 1. So therefore, the left and the right-hand limit have to equal the same. And do they equal the same? Does the left and the right-hand limit at 1 same? No. So that limit does not exist. What about 2 from the right? So that's going to be values that are greater than 2, which is this like equation. right? So 2 from the right is going to be plugged in here. So that's going to be 3. 2 from the left is going to be values that are less than 2, which is 3. Obviously, guys, if the left and right hand limit are the same, then that's going to equal 3. So now here's evaluating. Again, when you're evaluating, like f of 0, like what function, if here's 0, what function does that fall under? Which function does 0 fall under? This function, right? This quadratic one, right? Would you guys agree? So I just got to plug 0 into that quadratic, which gives me 1. So you just plug 0, 0 squared is 0, 1 minus 0 is 0. At 1, we got to figure out which function is defined. So at 1, it could either be this function or that function, right? It's either this one or that one. Well, that's not included. That is included. So at f of 1, you got to plug it into this equation again, which was uh, 1 squared is 1, 1 minus 1 is 0. f of 2, again, could be either function. So you got to look at them and see which one's included, which one's not. This is included. That's not included. So you use that function. So you plug in 2. 2 times 2 is 4. Minus 1 is 3. And then last but not least, f of 3. So if you go over to f of 3, you guys can see we're using this last function. And again, remember these graphs are wrong. But at least the last function, which is 3, all that is greater than 2. So 3 equals that. 3 times 2 is 6. Minus 1 is equal to 5. Anybody get them all right? All right, all right, good. So, 